gazelle-like speed, eagle-like eyes for goals, and Albus Dumbledore-like magic in his boots. Mohamed Salah is one of the greatest forces of nature that the Premier League has ever witnessed. He is the Egyptian king after all. But believe it or not, before the king was crowned, he was more Premier League pauper than prince. Today on Football Reality, we're delving into the career of Mo Salah, who went from a flop to the top. The village of Negrig, outside Basyun, has fewer than 9,000 inhabitants and is surrounded by the giants of Cairo, Alexandria and Port Said. However, this humble place has one huge claim to fame in the football mad country of Egypt. It is the birthplace of their current most famous son, national team captain and Premier League 100 club member Mohamed Salah. After impressing at local youth teams in Basyun, Salah joined Egyptian Premier League side Al Mokaloun as a 14-year-old. Such was the commitment of the youngster, he regularly made the three-hour journey to the outskirts of Cairo to get to training. And such was his ability, he was quickly promoted to the first team and made his Premier League debut at the age of 17 in May 2010. He continued to grow over the 2010-2011 season, scoring his first five professional goals before starting all 15 games and scoring seven times in the 2011-12 season, which was cut short following the Port Said Stadium riot. The league suspension actually had a positive outcome for Salah, as Switzerland's FC Basel used the long gap in fixtures to arrange a friendly with Egypt's under-23 side. Basel had been scouting Salah for a while, and they liked what they saw in the right winger, who had already made his competitive debut for the Pharaohs as a 19-year-old, and they decided to take him to Switzerland, paying Al Mokaloun £2.25 million for the privilege. It took Salah time to find his feet, scoring 10 times in 47 appearances in the 2012-13 season as Basel won the Swiss title and reached the semi-finals of the Europa League. It was on that European run that Salah announced himself to English fans, scoring in the quarter-final victory over Tottenham and in the semi-final second leg at Stamford Bridge, where the Rotblau eventually lost to Chelsea. Champions League football followed in the next campaign, where Basel rematched with Chelsea in the group stage. There was a sense of deja vu in the first match, as Salah scored at Stamford Bridge but this time in victory. The campaign tailed off after that, and Basel only won once more in the group and were eliminated. That victory though, a 1-0 win over Chelsea, goalscorer Mohamed Salah, paraphrasing an old saying, if you can't stop him, sign him. That appeared to be Chelsea's mantra for the January transfer window in 2014, as having conceded three goals in three games to Salah, they bought him to West London for a fee of £14.85 million beating off competition for his signature from league rivals Liverpool. Again, Salah didn't hit the ground running at a new club. He scored twice and assisted once, all in comfortable victories in his first 10 Premier League matches as the Blues finished third. With a full preseason under his belt, the 2014-15 campaign was primed for Salah to really push on and become a regular member of Jose Mourinho's lineup. Unfortunately for Mo, things didn't quite go according to plan. In the Premier League, Salah played a total of 30 minutes. Yep, minutes, not matches, minutes. Three substitute appearances, no goals and no assists was all Salah contributed as Chelsea went on to win the Premier League title. He played five times across other competitions, providing two assists, one against Shrewsbury Town in the League Cup and one against Bradford City in an infamous 4-2 home defeat to the lowly Bantams. That match turned out to be Salah's last in a Chelsea shirt, as he was loaned out to Fiorentina for the rest of the season, less than a year after making his debut, and still four and a half years left on his contract. Salah had flopped, and no one seemed to give him much chance of a redemption arc. So why the flop? Well, those of you who watched the first in our From a Flop to the Top series will know that a big part of Kevin De Bruyne's flop was, spoiler alert, Chelsea. Is it simply a case that Chelsea is the stumbling block on so many stars' careers? Just because? Surely it can't be that simple. Like De Bruyne, Salah was played out of position by Mourinho. In fact, he too was shifted out to the left wing. Unlike De Bruyne, this didn't happen as often. He played five of his 20 games on the wrong side, and three of those were just for a handful of minutes. Now, if position wasn't such a problem, then why did the move just not work? 
Those ahead of Salah in the Chelsea midfield pecking order at the time included Eden Hazard, Oscar, Willian and Cesc Fabregas. Could it be that there was simply too much competition for places in the midfield for Salah to get a chance? We are talking about a title-winning squad here. They tend to be quite settled. Maybe just a case of bad luck for Mo. Another reason could be Chelsea's transfer policy. Maybe Chelsea did extensive scouting on the Egyptian, or maybe they decided to buy him based on his performances against them. Salah scored 15% of his total Basel goals against Chelsea. Could that have affected the Blues' judgment? We know now that Chelsea bought what would turn into a world-class talent, but it seems that Salah wasn't ready for such a big league back then. The final possible reason, and we're looking at Salah himself. Clips of his time at Chelsea show you the same mazy dribbles and wonderful control that we know he possesses, but what they didn't show is his killer finish. Yeah, a lack of end product was the main criticism of Salah in his Chelsea days. With hindsight, we know the world beater wasn't the finished article, but back in 2014, he was a flop. How then did he become the Egyptian king we know today? His Fiorentina spell got off to a flyer, with four goals in his first six matches, eventually ending the season with 9 in 26. That prompted Roma to pay Chelsea a £4.5 million loan fee to keep him in Italy for the 2015-16 campaign. Salah shone in the Eternal City being named Roma's player of the season as he scored 15 times and provided 7 assists. That was enough to free Salah from Chelsea's clutches, as Roma signed him permanently for £13.5 million. The 2016-17 was even better. 19 goals and 13 assists was his total, despite missing a month for the African Cup of Nations, where he and Egypt took silver medals. The 25-year-old was attracting a lot of attention across Europe, Few could believe this was the same guy frozen out at Chelsea. He had done enough to earn a move back to the Premier League, and three years after missing out on him, Liverpool bought him to Anfield for £34 million. He still had plenty of critics to silence, though. When asked whether he was now ready for the Premier League, he said, Everything has improved. Even my personality was different. I was a kid. I was 20 or 21. Now I'm older, everything is different. And how right he was. He scored on debut against Watford, which was the first of 32 goals from 36 starts, a record for a 38-game Premier League season. Salah scored 12 more in other competitions as Liverpool reached the Champions League final, which they lost to Real Madrid to end the season trophyless. But Merseyside had gained a new hero. Mo was awarded Player of the Season by the PFA, FWA, Liverpool's players and their fans, Quite the debut campaign where he was regularly serenaded by the cop, who had christened him the Egyptian King. A year later, Liverpool did get their hands on a sixth European Cup as Salah scored five en route to the trophy. He missed the otherworldly 4-0 win over Barcelona through concussion, but his never-give-up t-shirt that night became iconic as he showed his leadership qualities off the pitch to help the Reds achieve the impossible. Salah only scored 22 times that season, winning another golden boot as Liverpool's front three of himself, Sadio Mane and Roberto Firmino became one of the Premier League's greatest attacking lineups. Then, in 2020, came the culmination of all Salah and Liverpool's hard graft, as they won the title for the first time in 30 years. Salah was again Liverpool's top scorer in the league with 19. Since then, Salah has joined the Premier League 100 club, currently sitting on 122 goals from 201 matches and in 2022, won a third Golden Boot. With Liverpool, he's won the FA Cup, League Cup, UEFA Super Cup and Club World Cup, and reached another Champions League final. He has taken Egypt to their first World Cup final since 1990, picked up another runners-up medal at AFCON, and is chasing down the country's all-time top scorer. Plus, the number of individual awards, ranging from the Puskas Award to Premier League Playmaker of the Year to African Footballer of the Year, is becoming impossible to count. It's not just on the pitch where Salah is shining. His hometown of Nagrig now has a new hospital, ambulance unit, school and youth centre, thanks to donations from Mo. He has also provided land for a waste treatment plant, allowing the locals access to clean water. The kid from the village, who was cast out by the big boys before becoming the Egyptian king who gave back to the community. A story worthy of the pharaohs. If you enjoyed this video, remember to check out the first in our From a Flop to the Top series on Kevin De Bruyne. But don't stop there. 
Check out all our videos here on Football Reality. Subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.